Welcome back to the Morning Glory Sessions, the series where my dad, Dr. J, preaches for me all the way to work. We are so happy to have you all back with us. We're glad you've been enjoying the series so far. We've loved all the feedback and we're excited to keep being able to bring this to you all each and every week. So without any further ado, my dad, Dr. J. Hallelujah. This is the day. Hallelujah. Never been a day like this day before. Woo. Never been an opportunity like the opportunity that is before us today. Amen. Hallelujah. So seize the day. Get that opportunity by the neck and make it pay you. Hallelujah. You got time. You got energy. You got love. You have ability. You have destiny. Get a hold of that thing and make it work for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> the best friend you'll ever have is you if you love yourself and the worst enemy you'll ever have is you if you hate yourself and have self-destructive tendencies hallelujah i want to talk to you just a moment today hopefully very encouraging words about three prison houses there's nothing worse than being in prison i've been locked up in in uh, third world countries uh, doing missions work. I've had all kinds of crazy experiences. And I can tell you, being in prison, the worst thing about being in prison is you don't get to make any choices. You don't get to choose what color socks you're going to wear. You don't get to choose what you eat for dinner. You, they have taken away all the choices you have in life. But when you woke up this morning, there was a full smorgasbord of opportunity in front of you. And so you have all the opportunities you will ever need right now. You, in the situation you're in, you have options. You have opportunities. And you have the ability to seize those things and press forward in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So the first prison house we want to get you out of, <clears throat> prison house number one, is I can't. Because when you say you can't, guess what? Can't. You can't. The man said, whether you say I can't or whether you say I can, you're right either way because it's your confession. I had an uncle who worked for 50 years for the railroad and he was a normal, intelligent fellow, but he had never learned to read or write, didn't go to school. And so after he'd been with the railroad about 30 years, they came and asked him to become a station manager, a station master. And he said, well, I can't even read or write. How am I going to be the station master? They said, well, we'll give you a secretary that knows all the machines and everything, how to do the letters, and you just tell her what you want. Write a thank you letter to Mr. Jones, and she will do exactly what, you know, call, make an appointment, and she will take care of all the work. You don't need to know anything. And he said, unfortunately, he said, I just can't do it. And so they approached him several times during his career trying to make him a station master. And they would say, you got to do this, man. You, you can handle this. And he said, I just can't do it. And so they approached him a couple of years before his retirement and said, we will let you retire with a much higher level of pay. And you know the whole story. Your retirement's based on your final salary. And they said, this will give you probably an extra half a million, maybe a million dollars during your retirement. And he said, I just can't do it. And so don't be that guy, my friend. You can do it. Everything that God wants you to do, you can do it. When I was signed up in seminary to take Hebrew, I had this boogaboo in my mind, you know, you, his Hebrew is going to be hard. You know, Aleph, Bait, Gimel, Dalit, just learning the alphabet's bizarre. Reading from right to left, reading from the back of the book to the front of the book. And I told myself, oh, this is going to be so hard. But I said, okay, just make a commitment. The book says you got to study two hours outside of class for every hour in class. Make a commitment, do what you're supposed to do, pray over it and let God take care of the rest. And of course, you know the answer. I made an A in Hebrew. And that's not to brag, but to say that if I hadn't studied correctly, I wouldn't have made my A. And if I had said, oh, I'll just never make it, I wouldn't have made it. 
but you can do what God wants you to do. You can do what you need to do. I knew a lady who was related to me, and she uh, dropped out of high school. She was on drugs, living on the street in New York City, trading her body for drugs from the time she was just, you know, an early teen. Terrible life, hard life, difficult life, broken marriages, sad situation. You say, well, get to the good part. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Give me a chance. And so at 40, she made a decision. I was talking to her. She made a decision. She said, well, I'm going to do something with my life. So she got herself born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. And she said, I'm going to go to college and I'm going to make something of myself. So by the time she was 50, halfway through her 50th year, she was a medical doctor. They gave her a $150,000 signing bonus to sign a contract with a hospital for so many years to work on their staff. And so she went from being, I'll sell my body for enough drugs to get one good high, to being a wealthy, well-respected, high-income medical doctor. Hallelujah. Why did she do it? Because she believed she could do it. I told her she could do it. The Holy Spirit within her helped her do it. And the whole thing about I can't needs to be removed from a Christian's vocabulary. But the Apostle Paul said, Philippians, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And so God will strengthen you to do whatever it is you needed to do. On a lot of mission trips I've been on, the people don't understand that they plan so many speaking engagements and so much travel, they're not thinking about how difficult this is going to be. And so you get put in a situation where if they told you in advance, we've got all this stuff for you to do, You'd say, well, no, I can't do it. But thank the good Lord, they don't ask you if you can do it. They just plan all this stuff as if you were a superhero. And then you go in there and the Holy sure. Spirit emboldens you and empowers you. And suddenly you can do all things through the anointing which comes upon you. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to challenge you today. See, the worst thing about people that say they can't is when they look at you and it's the second prison house. They say, you can't either. And so the same judgment they put on themselves that they're not able to do it, they look at you and say, you'll never make it either. So they say to their friends and children and those around them, you're just not going to make it. You're always going to be a loser. You're not going to make it. It's too hard. It's too complicated. You're just, you're going to get discouraged and quit. And they tell you, you can't. And the reality is when people put you in a prison box, a verbal prison, and that's what people get in, a word prison. Mm. If you want to call it something, it's a word prison. The prison that says you can't do it. And when everybody around you believes you can't, then it gets very difficult for you to maintain the proper attitude about your life. Hallelujah. Mm. And so people who are losers... They train their children to be losers. You can't do it. You're going to fail. You're not going to make it. Of course you can't pay your bills. Of course you're going to have to go bankrupt. And so they take their own prison house of I can't and they place it on you. But in addition to that, the third prison house is we can't. Because if I can't and you can't, well then probably nobody can. So they look at life. They look at the church. They look at the family and they say, well, none of us are going to make it. We just can't do it. Hallelujah. But I had a little black man when I was a teenager, lived next door to my parents, and he sat looking out the window every day, looking at the street. He lived near the end of a street, and coming up that road, it was a little hill, he would watch, and he looked out that window all day. And I had no idea what he was waiting for. And one day, a big, shiny new Cadillac pulled up, and a guy dressed in a classy suit got out. It was his son. And his son was a wealthy businessman. He put him through college and all, and his son was coming to visit. And that man's hopes and dreams 
were attached to that son. And he was so proud. I went over after the son left and said, who was that? He said, that was my boy. Mm. And I want to tell you, there's success ahead for you, but you've got to let all those things just put them out of your mind. You're talking about cast out devils. The main devil you need to cast out of your mind is that you can't. And they can't, we can't, nobody can. And begin to say, through Christ, we can do all, thing, all things. Hallelujah. Amen. So we love you. We want you to be successful. Christ loves you. He wants you to be successful. The power that rules the universe dwells in your bosom. So how could you not be successful? The only way you can not be successful is if you create your own word prison where you tell yourself and you word curse yourself, I can't do it, I can't do it. It's not going to work. They're going to catch me. It's going to be bad. I'm going to fail. So be encouraged, my friend. Mm. You can do it. I can do it. Daniel can do it. We can all do it in the mighty name of Yeshua <laughs> HaMashiach, Jesus our Savior and Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Love you guys. Hey, thanks for coming out again. We can't wait to see you next time. Until then, we'll see you. <laughs> Bye. Amen.